by Coke. Always Coca-Cola. Hey, welcome to Georgia Southern Football 96. I'm Scott Pierce along with the Eagles head coach Frank Elwood. Georgia Southern on the road this week up in Chattanooga taking on conference foe UT Chattanooga, the Moccasins. And coach, you come in here after a tough loss to Marshall hoping to uh, play some good ball today. Well, we did play good ball at times for three quarters. We played fairly well, but um, we just couldn't put it together. Uh, I thought we were back at the swamp. Uh, we played in one swamp when we were at Florida, and it, the field looked like we were back at the swamp again today. But uh, we just didn't play well enough. We shot ourselves in the foot. We made too many mistakes, and consequently, we lost the game. Conditions before the game, heavy rain in Chattanooga, the field in very, very poor condition, and that's got to maybe affect a running game that Georgia Southern bases their whole hopes on. Well, yeah, it does. It, it really affects our offensive linemen as much as it affects anybody else, simply because they have no traction, and they, mm -hmm. uh, they've they been the strength of our offense. Uh, I can't say that's the reason, uh, but at the same time, it did change our plans a little bit. We, we threw a little bit more than we normally would, but we threw pretty well, so you mm -hmm. can't really say that that killed you. You just have to you have to say it changed your game plan and your attack a little bit. It was a tough game for the Eagles who come into the game with only one win on the season. And UT Chattanooga, of course, another Southern Conference team. It's important for Georgia Southern to get in the win column in the conference early on in the season. We'll have a look at the first half highlights from Chamberlain Field right after. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 96. I'm Scott Pierce with Eagles head coach Frank Elwood. A tough day to play football in Chattanooga, at least we thought so going in. A lot of rain around the area, the field in rough condition, but about 30 minutes before game time, it stops raining up here and looks like we're going to get uh, at least nice current conditions, but we had to play on a very wet field. And coach, coming into the game, you, you and I were talking before the game, and you said you were really concerned about how Georgia Southern came out to play the game. Well, that's and that's a coach's fear all the time. You really don't worry, worry as much about your opponent as you do about how you play. Mm -hmm. uh, the mistakes you make in, in our, our first three games, we knew we had made a few too many. We worked very hard on fundamentals. Sometimes I wonder if maybe we, we work too hard and we make the kids a little tight. I don't mm -hmm. know. There's a fine line that you have to you have to look at as a coach to try to understand. But uh, again, today we shoot ourselves in the foot with penalties, with interceptions, uh, things that are, are not characteristic of our football team. And consequently, that's why we're one and three. So let's take a look at the first half highlights. Georgia Southern wins the toss, elects to receive the ball. We come out and the offense sputters a little bit. We're not able to get anything going on our first drive. So we have to punt the ball after a few short plays to Chattanooga. And coach, they really came out and moved the ball. In fact, they had one long run for a touchdown that was called back. Yeah, they're they're really uh, they were really fired up. Uh, we were hoping that would be us fired up, but they were fired up. Uh, they had a good game plan. They knew where to run on us till we could make our adjustments. It was uh, it took us a while to get settled in and and finally stop them. But uh, uh, fortunately, there was a penalty, so that took away the uh, the first touchdown right. for them. That was a 52-yard run that the tailback had called back for holding against Chattanooga. They didn't let that stop them, though. They drove right down the field, and they got down, Coach, to a fourth and one situation within the five-yard line, and they pulled something that Marshall pulled on you, a fake field goal. Well, it, it really wasn't a fake. What it was is they, they set up in a field goal and then shifted into mm -hmm. a, a run play right. formation, which we were ready for, but the ball was on like the one, the six-inch line, so it really wasn't it really wasn't a con job. They just blew us in the end zone, and we didn't. We debated whether to put our rush team in or whether to just leave our defense in. Uh, I really didn't feel bad at that time, like I did in the Marshall game. Right. And after that score, that makes it seven to nothing, Chattanooga, with 8:52 to go in the first quarter. Georgia Southern then gets the ball, and it seemed that we came out and we had trouble holding on to the ball. Kenny couldn't really receive the snap from center very well. We had two snaps in our uh, center quarterback exchange today. We had a bad snap on our. Uh, in our shotgun formation, uh, those are those are once again uncharacteristic mistakes for us, and and it's very unusual uh, that we don't make the center quarterback exchange, but. Uh we did have the problem. Georgia Southern's able to get one first down after out of that series, but then they're forced to punt back to UT Chattanooga. And their first play from sc uh, scrimmage, first and 10 at their own 25, they pull off a 45-yard run. They they had us scouted pretty well and uh, and blocked it well, and we just didn't get the uh, fill by our one safety, and that broke it out for a long run. And Georgia Southern's able to stiffen, though, once they get closer to the uh, end zone and only gives up a field goal, though. It's 10 to nothing UTC, and that's how the first half is going, or first quarter, rather, is going to go with about three minutes left. We get the kickoff, and our first play, we fumble. 
And even though it's a strange play, they fumbled back to us on their first play. Well, I, I guess the field conditions had a little bit to do with that. The officials switched the ball as often as they could, but there still gets a grime on them that's difficult to handle. So we were fortunate in getting it right back because had they scored there, it could have been it could have been a very long day. In listening to you talk to some of the uh, the other reporters here, you saw it. Most everybody saw it. Georgia Southern for 15 minutes the first quarter really didn't come out to play. We just didn't. We didn't look like we did. You know, you always think you're playing, but it seemed like as we the longer we went then starting with the second quarter then we started hitting harder we caused some mistakes on their offense we did some things we get on the board and away we and away we go and we're able to get things moving we're able to finally get a drive going and we're going to have a our first uh, i think our first touchdown pass of the season is that right to sullivan right. Mm -hmm. to sullivan for about 19 yard touchdown a beautiful play right across the middle kenny had plenty of time to uh, drop back and throw that one that makes it 10 to 7 UTC as we go through the second quarter. Kenny Kenny said he read it. We knew that the inside was open and it was if you'll see it was a slot back making his break right through the safety position, caught it and then had to be one one tackler to get in the end zone. And that's a uh, good effort. It was a great touchdown for Georgia Southern. That cuts the score 10 to 7. That's how the half is going to end. We'll be back with a look at second half highlights and also an interview with athletic director Sam Baker right after this. Stay tuned. Play it. Let's just start with an overall direction of the football program. I think uh, the, the thing I'm proud of stuff right now is how the players and the assistant coaches have, uh, under uh, Coach Elwood's leadership, jumped in there and have worked very hard. Uh, a lot of the concern leading into the season was that this was an interim season, that the players wouldn't uh, work hard. Uh, we've lost to two number one, two number one teams in the country. Interim season, you brought it up. Obviously, it's not just the media talking about it. Uh, is that something you really had to take into consideration before making the move that you did? Uh, most of the coaches available that were available at that time were unemployed, and there's reasons they're unemployed. And I, you know, I want to look at the largest pool of uh, coaches that we can work with. Frank Elwood wins out. Has a great run in the playoffs. Come back next year. Uh, we are looking for a football coach, and uh, you know, uh, I've said from day one that I am looking forward to Frank Elwood being back upstairs with me as a senior associate athletic director. All those involved with our athletic program and the university uh, should be very proud to have a person like him represent us. But no doubt, he's enjoying himself. He should decide that uh, he likes it. Is that? A... I, 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 I think he's uh, happy in the role he's playing right now. If you had to point to one biggest reason why Tim Stowers was let go, what would that be? Well, I, it'd be hard to put into to one phrase. I mean, obviously, Tim uh, is a good person. He uh, won a lot of football games. As I got into it, I honestly just felt uh, deep down that we were just dead in the water as far as fan enthusiasm. I didn't sense an excitement amongst our football players. Watching Sports South telecast of the Florida game, they said that you and Tim Stowers had a personality conflict. Was that them not doing their homework, or was that accurate? Uh, Sports South didn't do their homework then. I'll go on record as saying that. Tim Stowers and I had no personality conflicts. I mean, it's hard not to like Tim Stowers. Can you give us a couple of names, some of the possible coaches? Drop us a line. Uh, I'd rather not get into names. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I, I've, I've kind of kept it close to the vest. I'm sure as we get to talking to some people, uh, word will start leaking out and things, but uh, we're going to try to do that as low-key as possible also. Okay, and Ray Goff, everyone asks about him. Uh, Ray will be considered, uh, as I've said, uh, we'll get due consideration, as all coaches will. One of the big selling points of Georgia Southern, would that be we're going to follow Marshall, we're going to follow Central Florida, we're going into Division 1A? I honestly believe that uh, that these institutions that have gone up to 1A are in the long run fooling themselves. Uh, they are not 1A programs. Uh, and I think as we get into restructuring, that those institutions are going to uh, uh, move back. Right, we came out. It looked like we had a lull on the defense. We spotted them 10 points to start off with with the game. And, you know, we can't do that with good teams like UTC and Marshall, the teams we're playing in the conference. So we've got to come out next week and work hard and, and come out out of the gates real tough. Well, I don't think um, 
you know, we've played up to our capabilities yet, but. Well, uh, it's a lot of teams, you know, don't believe we can, you know, option pass, you know, so we run it enough, so they come up on it. So we felt it was the right time to run it, and uh, they bit just like we thought they would, and uh, it was wide open in the back. Useful and vital is that they can show you a run at one moment, then the next minute they'll pass on you. So we had to go into this week, look for play action, and plan off of that. Welcome back to Georgia Southern Football 96, the second half highlights of Georgia Southern at UT Chattanooga. And we come out trailing 10 to 7 in the second half, Coach, and we see a little strange play. Chattanooga's penalized for delay of game because their band was on the field. Right. The, the thing that concerned us at halftime most of all was that Chattanooga had the ball 42 snaps. Mm -hmm. We had it 28, and that's a big difference. Uh, normally, it's the other way around right. with our offense, but it just... It was indicative of, of how the first half went. That penalty certainly helped us. I thought this is an this is an advantage because we're gonna we're gonna put them in a hole and give us a little bit of going, but it didn't work out quite like that. Well, you, we knew going into the game that you had uh, new, four new starters in the defensive back backfield because of injuries and things right. like that, and it looks like they were gonna pick on them coming out that first series. Chattanooga is able to uh, pass for a first down with a down and out. They got about eight yards on it and right. set up beautifully their next play, a touchdown, a down, out, and up, and they just blew the coverage just, for a long uh, touchdown. And it was two freshmen that was uh, that got beat on that. And, I, and I'm not po pointing the finger at them because they they played very well, I think. Mm -hmm. I just got a feeling we'll find out they played very well. But mm -hmm. uh, it, was a, it was a great call on Chattanooga's part. They knew where to go, and they did it and they executed it, and that's what happened. And the long pass makes it 17 to 7 UTC in the third quarter. Georgia Southern is going to come out and they're going to get finally a good good drive going and we're going to drive all the way down the field. Some great plays and uh, also mixed in some penalties from uh, against Chattanooga right. to get us down to the touchdown. That always helps and uh, and we'll take any break we can. We had one critical call on a fourth and inches where we went for it on mm -hmm. our own 40 and I, I sometimes wonder if the coach had any brains on that. <laughs> but when it works and it works, you can say, well, that was a great call. Right. Uh, it, but it, it kept the drive going, right. and that's what got us into the end zone. And where Georgia Southern's able to score, making the score 17-14. to 14, Georgia Southern closing it to within three in the third quarter. And it looked very good for the Eagles at that point. They finally looked like they're playing like the Georgia Southern we're used to seeing, able to drive down the field. I felt real good about it, uh, our team at that point because I think we had, uh, we, had a, we had things going for us. We were playing good, hard football, tough football and we did the rest of the game, but we, we just ended up short. Georgia Southern kicks off to UT Chattanooga. Chattanooga is unable to move the ball. They have to punt it back to us, and we're moving down the field, starting the drive, and then we're going to see uh, one of Kenny's uh, interceptions on the day. Right. Uh, it, he was actually rushed. Probably Kenny should have pulled it back in and just taken the loss, but uh, typical, let's give it one more try, and he threw it, and the ball was floating a little bit, and the linebacker just, there was no question it was going to be picked off. And with that uh, interception, Chattanooga is able to drive down the field, set themselves up for a field goal, which makes it 20 to 14 UTC, three minutes to go in the third quarter. And we're going to take the ball, a good kickoff return by uh, Tut on this play, right. gets it out to the 41 yard line. Right, Rico did a great job. Of course, Rico's new in our lineup now. He's mm -hmm. been out with that uh, fractured kidney that he got in the first scrimmage. And and we welcome him back because he's got great speed and he's a fine, fine competitor. And then on the preceding series, we're going to see a very interesting play. We're going to see the Kenny uh, is going to pitch it to Joyner, who's then going to plant and throw a long pass to Bing for a touchdown. Yeah, that was a great pass. And I just, uh, we work on that play all the time. We have it in our arsenal. Uh, it's off of our base running and option play, so it, it's bound to work at some time. That's able to give Georgia Southern the lead 21 to 20 at the very end of the third quarter, going to the fourth quarter. Both teams play tough, and then Chattanooga's driving the ball. Looks like we have them backed up. I think uh, they're at a third and 27, and then we see a late hit by one of our players, which gives them new life. Right, and it's not only the yardage, the penalty that helped them, it's an automatic first down mm -hmm. call, and that really is what cost us dearly. It then put them in a position where they could take a chip shot field goal and they made it and uh, that was the difference. And that was the difference, difference with Chattanooga leading in 23 to 21. Georgia Southern has got one last try with a couple, or actually the second to last try, a couple minutes to go, but we throw another interception. Right. Another interception that killed our last real offensive threat. Mm -hmm. uh, the last play of the game, we got it back, uh, but we're out of timeouts. Uh, we have a long pass. We take it probably to their 30, but it we don't have a time to set up for a field goal, so it's just a matter of 
we came up short. That's right, a tough loss for Georgia Southern, 23-21. to We go home and hope to get well for our next game against VMI. We'll have highlights and look forward to that coming up right after this. Tough loss for the Eagles on the road in the Southern Conference this week up at UT Chattanooga. The Mocs are able to hold on and win 23-21 to against the Eagles. And, Coach, this really makes uh, the rest of the road a little more difficult. Well, for our seniors, they, they've given us great leadership. They try hard. Uh, we came up short. Uh, I talked to them in the locker room after the game. We're going to find out what our character really is as a football team. Uh, this is a team effort. It involves coaches, managers, trainers. It, it, equipment people it includes everybody and we just have to tighten up our belts we have to make, quit making some mm -hmm. silly mistakes and play better football to win the eagles have been sort of a mixed bag this season i think against south carolina state and against florida even the offense looked very strong and sure of itself and then in the marshall game in this game at times the, the offense was sputtering well we looked a little tentative at times mm -hmm. now some of it could be blamed to the field conditions mm -hmm. i can't uh, to be quite honest but at the same time uh, the last two weeks, we haven't been quite as sharp as we were earlier in the mm -hmm. season. I think you're correct. Okay. Next week, though, Georgia Southern at home taking on VMI. They come to town, and this will be a chance, hopefully, if we play well, to get a win under our belt in the conference. Right. We, we need it. We need it badly. I'm glad we have VMI at home. Mm -hmm. uh, they played at Furman today, as I understand, mm -hmm. and it was a, ver a fairly close game, and Furman's a pretty good football team. So I don't know what to look for in the tapes. They haven't won a game yet this year, but at the same time, when you're in a conference, that doesn't mean a whole lot. You come out of this game uh, fairly healthy, at least no new injuries. No in new this injuries, game. And, uh, and I think hopefully we'll get uh, maybe some support back in our secondary for next week's that game. That sounds good. That's going to wrap it up from here. Georgia Southern taking a loss here, 23-21 to against UT Chattanooga. But next week at home in Paulson Stadium, we take on VMI. That's going to wrap it up for us. For Coach Frank Elwood, I'm Scott Pierce. We'll see you next week.